what are we talking about when we talk about the autonomic nervous system? Uh, this is a classic diagram of the organization of the autonomic nervous system. And uh, to uh, a novice in the area, it's just impossibly, impossibly complex. Uh, so we're going to try to begin from scratch here and build up. And I, I'm hoping that by the end of this uh, segment on what is the autonomic nervous system, you'll be able to look at that diagram and make some sort of sense out of it. I conceptualize the, uh, the, uh, the uh, central nervous system as being uh, analogous to a Tootsie Roll Pop. Uh, uh, anybody here not know what a Tootsie Roll Pop is? I've given this talk in Europe and they have no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, the, the, the concept is that the, uh, the central nervous system is like a Tootsie Roll pop. You've got the, you've got the stick. Well, that's the, that's the spinal cord. Uh, and you've got the, this uh, crusty candy shell. Well, uh, that's the... Uh, that's the cortex of the brain. But as, uh, as everybody knows, uh, the, key to the, the key to the Tootsie Roll pop is the chewy chocolate center, right? And that is the brain stem. So this is the Tootsie Roll pop analogy. And the, uh, as you'll see, the autonomic nerves uh, or, or nerves that are part of the autonomic nervous system uh, come from the brain stem and the thoracolumbar spinal cord and the sacral spinal cord, uh, not really the cervical uh, spinal cord. Now, so far, I haven't talked about where the autonomic nervous system is. That's the central nervous system. Uh, I divide the, the, uh, the peripheral nervous system into two parts the somatic nervous system, which is responsible for interactions between the, the organism and the outside world, especially by way of skeletal muscle. And uh, the autonomic nervous system, which I think of as the automatic part of the nervous system, that's involved with uh, regulation of the, the inner world uh, inside the body uh, by smooth muscle and glands. And uh, this is where the autonomic nervous system fits in. Now, I want to say right off the bat that the, the autonomic nervous, it's a terrible phrase because it implies uh, some sort of uh, autonomy between the autonomic nervous system. I haven't shown you where the autonomic nerves are yet but the autonomic nervous system and the central nervous system, which as you, as you just saw, doesn't involve the autonomic nervous system. But, but there's, th this autonomy is, uh, well, there isn't uh, such autonomy. If I wanted, for instance, to increase the sympathetic outflow to my heart, let's say, I could easily do so voluntarily by uh, my uh, uh, cortex. All I have to do is go like this real hard and uh, my blood pressure is going to go up and my heart rate is going to go up. Sympathetic outflow of the heart is going to go up. So the, this idea of uh, autonomy, I think, is wrong. I, I think of it uh, as uh, automatic. But it's just built into the, uh, the, uh, the way autonomics has been taught that there's autonomy and I'm, I, I can't get around it. So I'm going to call it autonomic nervous system, but just recognize it's not autonomous. Now here is where the uh, autonomic nervous system actually is. Uh, this is uh, a picture of a uh, sympathetic chain in a plasticized person. Uh, uh, I was at a was at an experimental biology meeting and I came across this display, really amazing, amazing thing. They, there's a program in, uh, in Holland where 
if you want to donate your body to uh, for medical science and so forth, uh, uh, instead of okay, there you are, a gross anatomy table, and then that's pretty much it. Instead, you can be plasticized, and then uh, and then uh, uh, and then your your insides are available for teaching purposes uh, indefinitely. Amazing program. <laughs> anyway, I came across this which shows beautifully uh, the sympathetic chain. You can see it's, uh, it's outside the central nervous system and is, is kind of arranged along the, uh, the front of the posterior ribs. And you can see these accumulations of, uh, of uh, nerve cells, and those are the ganglia. So conceptually, the uh, the sympathetic the sympathetic chain uh, is it looks like uh, like uh, pearls on a on a necklace on each side of the spinal column. So that's where that's where the autonomic autonomic nerves are. Now, wh what do these ganglia do? And to understand what the ganglia do, I use the analogy of. Uh, of how, how uh, electricity comes to your house. Uh, you don't, uh, of course, there are these, there's a generator plant and distribution center and then these, these towers that uh, con convey uh, thick, uh, high voltage uh, electricity. But that's not what goes to your house. Instead, outside your house, at least in older neighborhoods, uh, you have a utility pole. And on the utility pole, there's a transformer box and and from that utility pole and transformer box uh, there are thin kind of wispy uh, uh, wires that go to your house and uh, similarly uh, or analogously I should say the ganglia are like the uh, transformer boxes on the utility pole outside your house so you have these thick, rapidly conducting uh, preganglionic fibers, and then you have these wispy, slow conducting, thin postganglionic fibers, and that's what actually goes to the target organ uh, and the nerve terminals in, in target organs. So this introduces the idea of preganglionic and postganglionic uh, nerves. Thank you.